So this is a video about a um, premature baby that had um, uh, stage four, progressive stage four. And we know that surgeries on babies, mainly in ROP, are very exclusive. They are very difficult and they are technically a challenge. There are some rules. And um, this is the baby that had a progressive stage four, so it has a very high uh, reach that progressed to stage four with a, a, a huge fibrosis uh, to the ciliar body. So we decided to make a vitrectomy. And the first rule of baby's vitrectomy is never make a hole, you know? So I began to cut all the fibrosis to the ciliar body. And suddenly I saw, I was not eating um, fibrosis, but retina. So I felt a floor disappearing under my feet. But uh, I decided not to stop. So as all the retina was pushed to the um, ciliar body, I decided to cut all those directions and left the videos, the, the vitreous. The vitreous is a gel, so it could make like a tamponade of the posterior retina. So I just cut it, all the anterior tractions of the retina, made laser, and hope that the retina didn't detach. And amazingly, it was not detached in the next day, not even in the next two months, but suddenly began to have a, a very thin retinal detachment of the posterior pole, as you can see there. So I decided to make a second surgery. And in this, in this second surgery, it was very interesting because I usually cannot peel the posterior hyaloid in so uh, little babies. But at this time, I was able gently to create um, a way to get inside the posterior hyaloid. So I, uh, I colored it to better visual visualization. And suddenly I had a cleavage plan and could slowly take all the posterior highlight from this baby. It, it was not very easy. So as you can see, it's very adherent, mainly to the optic disc. So I had to cut it in the optic disc. I could not just push, pull it. If I may interrupt why yes. you're peeling here, did you do you always do your cases with the 27 gauge? Because it seems yes, like I did it all, and and the most difficult uh, membranes I would would uh, for, uh, use the forceps. So by um, in the first surgery, I made the mistake of eating the retina because I couldn't see. Okay. So I used to use a chandelier, and I, it, at that time I didn't use a chandelier because the high is so tiny, let not put so mm -hmm. many things. And then when I put the chandelier, I saw what I did. So <laughs> this time I put already chandelier by manual, and it did everything inside the eye. So at the end, I took all the hyaloid, cut all the, the remnants, anterior attractions, remnants, and although the first rule is never, never make a hole in this kind of retinas. Perhaps we must never give up. If you make a hole, you try to do everything you can for, for that eye. Um, that's an excellent case, actually, and it will uh, teach you many things. Uh, when I have any uh, retinal break during ROP surgery, uh, if it is in a silent area, I mean, if there is no big membrane, significant membrane there, uh, it's possible to manage those cases even with gas or those things because when you can just remove the uh, tosier hyaloid and the uh, membranes just around it, if it is a small one and if it is, a, if, if it is in a silent area, then uh, you end up with a good result. But if it is in a very uh, the high attraction area, uh, in the ridge area, it's really difficult to do this maneuver. But uh, you did it very well. Uh, another option maybe in such cases to use a buckle a local uh, sponge in that area, uh, because I had a case and it worked very well with the buckles. 
uh, uh, what I decided was to take all the directions. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the things I learned, the first one is I must see and use my usual technique. And perhaps if I use, used gently from the beginning, I would see what I was doing. It was not just main brain. It was, not, it was also retina inside the main brain because the retina of the kids are very plastic and elastic. So you, you must see always retina inside the directional membranes. The second thing is um, the vitreous gel is uh, really a gel like a tamponade of the posterior pole. I could never imagine that. So I decided to let it because I saw no tractions. Mm -hmm. But I was expecting the next day a whole retinal detachment. I had it already, you know, a little hole and everything is gone. But uh, I think it was a, a good decision to leave the posterior gel just cut anteriorly because I had laser, so somehow the retina was part of the retina was there. And then in a second surgery, mm -hmm. do the rest of the surgery. Well, at least it worked in this case, so I can, it can open doors to other kind of surgeries and other kind of techniques to these uh, no, ROP retina, ROP surgeries. Exactly. Dr. Yonakawa, did you want to make a comment there? Oh, yeah. So thank you very much for the beautiful video. That was amazing. And um, to follow up on uh, Lisa's point, uh, I think um, usually for ROP cases, we use 23, 25 gauge, and we're, we have a series of pediatric 27 gauge cases about, of about like 50 kids. Only about maybe one or two were ROP stage four surgeries. Um, I think it's really difficult because usually you have to torque the ILA to see the periphery. But what are, what are your, some, uh, some you know, advice techniques that, you know, when you're using 27 for ROP? The, the techniques to use, well, um I had no difficulty to use 27 uh, uh, gauge in this surgery. The eye is very little, little one eye, and with bimanual. And allow me to say that if I have inner light, I can use indentation. Mm -hmm. I don't have to bend so mm -hmm. much because all the problem is anterior. Mm -hmm. So I have my light, and I can make outside indentation and, without bending it, go to the periphery. So I had no difficulty to use uh, 27 gauge. Do you think the um, lighting is, I mean, do you think you find <laughs> lighting better on the, the larger gauge or, you know, because in the 27 you feel you need a chandelier, do you think you'd need a chandelier as well if, if you went to a larger gauge or no? Uh, you are asking me if I use chandelier just in this case? I couldn't understand. Yeah, so oh. do, do you think that the, the small, the 27 gauge makes the lighting uh, less? Well, um, it's a kind of technique. I'm used to have a chandelier usually in my cases because I do it most of the time I've got very difficult cases, so I do bimanual surgery and even retinal detachments. I like to make my own indentation, and I just can do it if I have chandelier. So this kind of uh, chandelier or a night accessory uh, light. So um, <coughs> two things change my life, the valve draw cars and the <laughs> light, you know. So I didn't have that rule to this surgery, so it's a little eye, I'm just going to have the, the first light. And I think it was the limitation because I am used to this, you know. So if you do these kind of things, don't change your technique, the technique you are used to. So that's a very good lesson, and actually, like you, uh, Dr. Tracy talks about a lot, the most difficult part of our, one of the most difficult parts is deciding what's retina and what's not. Yes. Just because, because the vitreous in general is also, can be very, very deceiving. And the retina goes inside uh, yes. the, 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 the proliferation, so you never know if you are just cutting the proliferation or a little bit of retina, because she goes inside and mm -hmm. it's not a retinal detachment, it's a tent. No, exa exactly. Um, we have time for one audience uh, question, or? So, what tamponade did you use? Just gas. Just air. I didn't use, no, no SF6, nothing. In the first eye, in the first surgery, I used no tamponade because I had a gel inside the eye, so I didn't want it to move or to be pushed by the, the, the air. In the second surgery, just, uh, just air. May I comment something? Oh, please, yes. Um, uh, Susanna, actually, I'm surprised that you are using um, uh, chandelier for 
pediatric cases because especially in babies you don't have any area to put a chandelier in That's and every sclerotomy causes some uh, you know damage and you have a risk of damaging the retina with uh, that uh, additional and, sclerotomy and, the lens. and chandelier and the and lens. lens because so chandelier what's is your it. technique uh, for putting the chandelier in you do uh, any sclerotomy or yes, I uh, do. We do 25 little, uh, 25. In which quadrant? I mean, it depends on. Usually, in the outside temporal, uh, temporal quadrants, because you don't have mm -hmm. uh, a little eye and you cannot accept the eye. Usually, temporal quadrants, and uh, uh, sometimes I don't use the trocar because the trocar is wide than the chandelier itself. So sometimes just the chandelier. And sometimes the, the vitreous also, if I don't have enough space without the trocars, just the cutter and the light. But this case, I had a good, uh, it was, the second surgery was older, so I had a, a better exposed eye and I could use trocars. But as you can touch the, the crystal lens, and um, it was, um, I, I spared the lens, so sometimes I don't use the trocars, just the direct entrance and close everything at the end.